what is packed just in time for Christmas. We have details in a live report. Family members are looking for justice for 25-year-old Elizabeth Martinez, as well as two other sex workers murdered by a suspected serial killer in Tijuana. Your holiday trip doesn't have to be so expensive. A travel expert breaks down when is the best time to pack your bags for less. And a hospital is no place for a child during the holidays, which is why law enforcement showers them with teddy bears, a special Zevely Zone throwback to 2014. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. We begin tonight with dangerously cold temperatures, a bomb cyclone, and more than 5,000 canceled flights as we start this holiday weekend. Good evening. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee. And I'm Jesse Pagan in for Carlo Chiquetto. The weather is still wreaking havoc on travel plans, delaying and canceling flights during one of the busiest times of the year, all while San Diego is warming up. Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis will have more on that in just a moment and how it's looking for the rest of the country. But first, let's go to CBS 8's Kirsten Holmes at San Diego International Airport tonight. Kirsten? Hey guys, yeah, we're here at the airport. If you take a look behind me, it's not completely busy, but we've been here for hours. I think around 3, 4 o'clock this afternoon, we saw a lot of clouds roll in. Maybe it was a marine layer, layer. I'm not a meteorologist, so I don't know. But what I can tell you is that we're getting reports of flights being diverted. We're hearing that flights have been diverted to L.A., some even to Ontario because of the weather that moved in. We're still waiting to confirm that, but we'll get those details for you momentarily. In the meantime, a lot of people were just happy to get to San Diego, but you know with those cancellations and all those delays, it made things pretty hard to get home for the holidays. Take a look. You can see it's like literally like a school of fish in here. Garrett Layden says airports are jam-packed everywhere with plenty of obstacles for travelers to overcome. I just downloaded the app of the airline I was going to go on, and that helped me a lot. Um, I know one of my buddies didn't, and then he had a problem with something, and he had to wait in like this line, like super crazy long line, whereas I just skipped all that, scanned it on my phone, and I was like out. It's too hot. It high. is hot. I had to come out my boots to put my Crocs on. I'm like, oh my goodness, we're going from the snow to the sun. Denise Porter says she's definitely happy to be in San Diego after flying in from Chicago for the holiday. The weather is freezing. It's below zero. I think it's eight, um, below eight degrees, negative eight degrees in Chicago right now. But as far as her trek across the country. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. The weather is horrible, but we made it. And it was, it was okay once they canceled our first flight, we made the second flight. We was good. San Diego is piece of cake compared to where we've been. Where you been? Oh, Atlanta, Houston, Phoenix. Jim lives in Poway and says he got stuck overnight on the tarmac for hours because of the weather. Running through airports, missing planes, canceled planes, you name it, we've been there. But still. I mean, I came out at zero degree weather. I'm, I'm looking at board shorts and flip-flops coming up for Christmas. Thursday's cancellations represented about 11% of U.S.-based flights. Nearly half of Thursday's flights were delayed. Today, cancellations were highest at airports in Seattle, Chicago, Denver, and LaGuardia. I had three cancellations before I got here, so it was very tiresome. How are you so calm after being delayed 24 hours? All you can do is be patient. You know, you'll make it to where you have to go eventually. Jason, another traveler from Chicago, says when times got tough, he knew who to call. I uh, called Southwest. I made some more, uh, you know, provisions and uh, finally was able to make it out of here. In the meantime, everyone we talked to today says it was all worth it just to say this in person. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> Okay, so we've seen social media posts that say planes are now flying over the East County when they usually come in over the San Miguel Mountain. Now, that could be a change, of course, due to the fog. Again, I started off by saying I'm not a meteorologist, but let's toss to someone who knows. Carlene, yes. what's up with the fog and when is it going to roll out? Well, unfortunately, not until tomorrow morning, Kirsten. So, yes, there is dense fog, and we now have a fog advisory. Visibility down to zero is what is, it, what is expected all the way through tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. So, on top of airplane delays because of wherever you're going, and you have that weather to talk about. You also have the fog that is rolling in here. So we are looking at fog in the forecast. It looks to clear by tomorrow as we go into the late morning hours and then all the way into the rest of the weekend. We are looking at clear skies, lots of sunshine. 75 degrees will be the high on Christmas Day. We start to back away from that heat by Monday, which is also the first day of Kwanzaa. You're talking about the low 80s across inland valleys. 82 degrees looks to be the high for the inland areas on Sunday. And as mentioned, we do have dense fog. 
fog. So that is going to be a factor for us at the airports. If you've been trying to get to the airport, that is going to be a problem, especially along the five. And as we go through tomorrow morning, we'll continue to have that thickness out there. Also talking about the offshore winds that we're going to be dealing with. That's going to help get rid of that fog by tomorrow and cooler temperatures by next week. All those details are coming up. Marcella, Jesse. All right, Carlene, thank you. Meantime, we're getting a first look at one of the women detectives think a U.S. citizen murdered in Tijuana. They say Elizabeth Martinez is one of at least three sex workers, a serial killer killed, believed to live in Southern California, and he was targeting them. As CBS 8's David Gofferson tells us, a Tijuana reporter spoke to the victim's uncle about the family's tragic loss. The mother of Elizabeth died several weeks after they found the, her body. Elizabeth Martinez was found dead in February, just a couple blocks away from Tijuana's red light district, Zona Norte. The 25-year-old was naked, beaten, and strangled in the back of her white Jeep SUV. Reporter Vicente Calderon with TijuanaPress.com spoke to the victim's uncle. Elizabeth knew this the suspect. She apparently has met with him before as a client. Martinez worked as an escort. By tracking her cell phone, police obtained surveillance video of the victim entering a restaurant with a man on the day she was murdered. After she met with the, the suspect, they went out to have a dinner, and afterwards that's when they head to the hotel. The 30-year-old suspect, identified by the Zeta newspaper in Tijuana as Brian Rivera, is reportedly a U.S. citizen. The FBI will not, however, confirm that Rivera is wanted. Calderon says police have been trying to locate him in the Downey area near Los Angeles. I believe that they spoke with the relatives of Brian, the suspect, but they haven't been able to do much. Investigators believe the suspect crossed the border in San Ysidro and may be involved in the murders of at least three sex workers in Tijuana, including Martinez, who were all found beaten and strangled. One of the victims was found in a dumpster. Um, the other one was found in, um, in the bathroom of the hotel room. And this one, apparently, she put it in the back of the vehicle and just left the, the car parked in the streets. Martinez's family told Calderon they are worried there could be more victims out there. The family is still trying to get justice in this particular case, and they are concerned that time is going by and still no concrete results. Calderon says Mexican authorities are still in the process of getting an arrest warrant in the United States so they can extradite that suspect back to Mexico, that is, if they can locate him. Now, David, why is the FBI not confirming the suspect's identity and not releasing any more information than they have so far? Well, uh, Calderon blames international bureaucracy. Uh, uh, in Mexico, when a arrest warrant is issued for somebody by law, they cannot announce that person's full name publicly. Uh, here in this country, the FBI is apparently waiting for extradition papers to be finalized. All right, David Garfordson continuing to dig into this one for us. David, thank you. And meantime, a warning not to drink and drive this holiday weekend. The CHP's maximum enforcement period is now in effect. Officers from CHP and other agencies are on the lookout for any drunk or impaired drivers from now until 1159 on Sunday night. They're also looking for people speeding and breaking other traffic laws on the road. Tonight, some holiday gifts won't ever reach their destination. A truck at a UPS facility in Kearney Mesa caught fire early this morning, destroying dozens of packages. It happened around 4.30 a.m. at the UPS Customer Center on Ronson Road. Employees were forced to evacuate as fire crews contained the flames. Firefighters were able to put the fire out quickly, but not before it burned about 150 packages. A worker told us it smelled like it could have been started by a lithium battery. To be honest with you, we have a lot of hazardous packages. Sometimes if they get too close, things can combust. Fortunately, no one was hurt. UPS says it is notifying affected packages by contacting the sender. Management says remaining shipments will be delivered as scheduled. 
North Park businesses have lost their court battle over those controversial bike lanes on 30th Street. An appellate court today rejected their lawsuit that challenged the city's decision to remove hundreds of parking spots to put in those bike lanes. Business owners say that decision hurt business and left customers searching long and hard for a place to park. But the city and cyclists say the lanes are needed to make the street safe and will help get more people out of their cars and onto their bikes. A new survey shows the high cost of doing business is driving more companies out of California. CBS 8 political reporter Morgan Reiner explains why it is so expensive here and where some businesses are heading. The core reason why businesses are leaving California is a reason we talk about often. It's the same issue behind some of California's other big problems like the homeless crisis. It's housing. California employees are having a hard time affording housing. Ken Miller is the director of the Rose Institute of State and Local Government at Claremont McKenna College. California continues to be uh, an expensive place uh, to do business. Uh, things like the minimum wage is more than twice as high in California than in a competitive state like Texas. Uh, taxes are higher in California. Uh, regulations and, and utility costs and license fees and all those kinds of things uh, tend to be high in California. This is a high cost state. And then there's the cost of housing. That's the main reason why employers are choosing to move out of state because their employees, many of them can't find an affordable house close to where they're working. Businesses do come to California, 45,000 since 1990 to be more precise. Uh, there are still reasons why businesses might want to do business here and uh, continue to choose to do so, including uh, a well-educated workforce, especially in the high-tech sector. But overall, more are leaving, 65,000. The numbers have been relatively stable over that three-decade period, although there's been a noticeable increase over the last few years. Uh, I think one of the reasons for that, with respect to the COVID pandemic and what transpired from that, is that more and more businesses found that they could have their employees working remotely. We can relocate out of the state and avoid some of the costs of doing business in this state. So where are these businesses going? The number one state, Texas. The number one city, Vegas. So we're seeing that many businesses in California that are choosing to leave don't want to go all the way to the East Coast or even the Midwest. They're looking at other neighboring states where the cost of business is less. Businesses leaving means people leaving. The U.S. Census Bureau came out with its report on population rates and found that California had the largest decline in people leaving for other states, states like Texas. All right, Morgan, thank you.